Hello everyone! I am back in the polytunnel again and I apologise for the noise that you're going to hear in the background because I thought this would be a great place to come out and film but the neighbourhood children have decided that the plateau on the other side of my fence is a great place to congregate and have some sort of children's games <laughs> and the dog has decided she needs to sit in my lap so I am going to get the dog sorted out and get the camera set up and then we will crack on with this video which is about the SP24 coil okay so the neighbourhood children have gone away and the little dog has settled down in my lap so we can get on with this I am making this video in response to a query by John Heaton on the Simplex Plus Owners Group. They have started a challenge um, uh, post, I guess you'd call it, of, uh, if you've gone through my videos and there's something that I haven't covered that you would like some information about, they have put them up and uh, those that I can, I will get to making a video on so that you can get answers. Now I had a partially made video on the SP24, which I've already posted up on the channel, you will have seen. Uh, because I had that, I thought, aha, this one I can do fairly easily. The other two questions were, why when you dig a hole, does something, uh, do the finds sometimes disappear? Um, which is a hard one to set up a shot for an example for so I'm thinking on that one I have answers for it but I just have to figure out how to illustrate it um, and I can't remember what the other one was but it was also a very good question and I will get to it so this video is on the SP24 coil which is currently on my simplex it is just here it is nine and a half by five inches double D elliptical coil the stock coil is this great beast. So these are the two that we have and it's virtually half, half of the stock coil. Now surprisingly there's only a 50 gram weight difference between the two of them but the balance is so much better on the small coil on the SP24 that I find I can swing much longer with it and not actually end up with a sore arm which is number one difference between the two coils. It's not a huge weight difference but a balance difference and it means if for any reason you do get niggles or you find it quite tiring with the big coil the SP24 is an improvement on that. Second, the SP24 is in my opinion what 2.77 was created for the SP24 and the SP22. Now, I am in no way affiliated with Noctimacro. I am not a nomad. Um, I have asked Dilek a question or two um, and she's come back to me, but that's it. There is absolutely no no affiliation or link between myself and Noctimacro whatsoever. This is all my own thoughts. Um, the second part of John's question was, what should I run? What program should I run? 2.68, 2.77, 2.78, I suppose 2.76 in there as well. Which which software should I be running for this coil? The next part kind of goes together. I think 2.77 was created for the SP24 and the SP22. Now, anybody that knows about metal detecting or has learned about metal detecting will know that larger coils see deeper. In theory, larger deeper, larger coils, see deeper, further into the ground. That's the advantage. That's why people with equinoxes get these great stonking 17 inch coils that I don't know how they lift um, because they want the depth. So the SP24 being nine and a half by five inches in theory should not see as deep as the SP28, the stock coil. What Noctimacro did to resolve this issue, I believe, is they have overpowered the simplex. They overpowered it on the stock coil, which is perfectly usable. You just turn the sensitivity down a bit if you have 2.76 or 2.77. Just turn your sensitivity down a bit and you're fine. But they overpowered it so that when you put the SP22 or 24 onto your simplex, you could run it at full sensitivity and you will be getting the same depth as the stock coil. This is my experience and my opinion. You generally can't run the stock coil on 2.77 at 
full strength. It gets too chatty. Sometimes you can, but generally you can't, and you need to turn your sensitivity down, which is fine because you're still getting more depth than you did on 2.68, more information than you did on 2.68. 2.78 is different. If you have 2.78, you will get the audio signals from that increased depth, but you will not get the VDI signals from that increased depth. So people say it's more stable, it's not jumpy, it doesn't chatter as much. That's because they've just reduced that information to you. It's less available to you. But it does mean that when you put a small coil on, you can't crank it up. You're stuck with what they've given you because they've reduced the information to you. So yes, you can run the stop coil on full sensitivity, but you are given limited information on the VDI for that stop coil. When you put the SP24 on, you will have, in my reasoning, you will have less information because it will see less deep than the stop coil but they're already limiting the information you get. So I think 2.77 is the ideal software to run with the SP24 because you can run it wide open. You can get everything that machine can do fed back to you. You, I very rarely have to turn down the sensitivity with the SP24 on the machine because it's stable and it works a treat. As I said before, the larger coil, I do need to turn the sensitivity down sometime, but that is because they've overpowered it. And I feel they've overpowered it so that you get the maximum depth you can with the smaller coil. I find that I get the same depth with the SP24 as that I got with the stock coil on 2.68. Okay, so my experience is 2.68 with a stock coil gives me the same depth as the SP24 on 2.77. Pretty much the same depth that I get with the stock coil on 2.77 as well, because I have to turn down the sensitivity. 2.78 will not increase that. It will not rectify that problem because you're just going to get less information. You'll run it at full sensitivity, but the machine will give you less information visually than you would have got. If you're, if you're an audio detectorist, Give it a try. See what you think. Maybe it'll work for you. It, for me, 2.77 is what I'm happy with. So, depth difference. On 2.77, I don't think you're losing anything. So, that's not a difference. Uh, third point that I want to raise. 2.77 and the SP24 can get you signals that you will never get with a stock coil. Since I have put that on, since I've put the SP24 on, it has not come off of my machine and it's not going to come off of my machine. If I went back to a field that I have thoroughly done with the SP24 and I've cleared it out, then I might reconsider putting the stock coil on just to see if I could get a bit more depth. But I don't know. One thing that you will find is that the SP24 will require you to swing more. It will take you longer to get through a field because it doesn't cover as much ground. It's smaller. It's, you know, it's only that wide. So when you're swinging and you're going across, you're not going to cover as much ground. It's going to take you longer. Um, you can swing it in fields. You can swing it in park ones. You can go a little bit faster, but it's just not going to cover the area that the stock coil is going to cover. That is, that's a negative but it's going to find you things you can't find with the stock coil. I promise you that. In the last week, I have found two silvers that I would not have been able to find with the stock coil. Absolutely could not have. The first example I have is in a new field that I have been working and it is absolutely full of slag. It is medieval ironworking slag and it squeals. Well, it doesn't squeal like aluminium, but it sounds off and it sounds off in all kinds of numbers. Though there's almost always a 95 or a 96 in with it. 
So when you go bi-directional, you will get a 95 or a 96 somewhere. And by digging enough of them, I realized, okay, that's something I can work out with this, um, that it is uh, the slag. I haven't tried the nip shield technique with it. I haven't been back to that field, but I will be trying Terry's technique to see if that whittles things out. If the nip shield technique works to whittle this out, it would not have helped on this signal because the signal that I got was this, but next to it was, where are you, my darling, this, this little thing here. This is, where's the camera? I'm not used to doing it this way. This is, and I don't even know how well you can see it. It's probably not focusing on it. I will put up a picture. This is a 1758 two reals Spanish piece of eight, pirate treasure. This was next to this, about like that. The big coil is not gonna separate these two. Not in this field. This field is a tatty field and the tatty holms have been cut but there is still stubble sticking up. So you have stubble, you have this, and you have this. Trying to get the big coil to lock onto this, with this right here, six inches down, it's not gonna happen. Or it's not gonna happen for me, let's put it that way. Um, I swung over this and I heard this sound off and then heard something else. And I thought, hmm. That sounds interesting. And I went over and I got in a little bit closer and it was bouncing around in the 60s within a couple of numbers. And I thought, hmm, let's try that. And I went all the way around it and I could isolate it. I could isolate it around. I could tell where the bouncy slag signal was because you've got this little coil. So I could get around the holms of the potatoes and I could, using the wiggle technique, I could get a solid signal and then my bouncy signal over here and I thought oh, I'm gonna dig that and up it comes and I was so excited before I knew what it was I thought it was a hammered because it's so thin that, that I actually made a wee little video of finding my first hammered and then unfortunately I've not been able to do anything with that because it's not technically a hammered it's from 1758 but that's okay it's still very, very cool. And I would not have found that with a stock coil. And I know that because the first video that I put up for the SP24, the one you've already seen, was done uh, on a field that uh, a friend of mine came and he actually has an Octa Macro Simplex Plus as well. He had not used the, um, the SP24 coil. He doesn't have one. And I asked him, did he want to swap machines? So we swap machines. So I used the stock coil for the day on that with that machine and I could not isolate things. I, I'd forgotten how difficult it was to isolate things away when you have two signals. Even with, you know, you've got park and it's really good because of the recovery speed, but I really struggled to separate them out um, because it's just a big coil. And that is something that's, it's gonna be more difficult. If you're trying to get into tight spaces, you're trying to get into stubble and in between things and you want, you need to be able to wiggle because you have to have the motion for the detector to pick it up. But, you know, it, it's squeeze and you're banging that coil off of it and it, the, the stock coil off of it just doesn't work. Okay, so the second signal, I was back on a field that I call the Field of Dreams and it's over on my Three Tones and the Truth channel where I originally started um, doing videos. And it's an absolutely wonderful field. But there, there is an Iron Age Cranach uh, and medieval um, hunting lodge on, on an island uh, just off of the field that I'm on. It's 100 meters away. That's the requirement because it's a scheduled ancient monument. This field, I have done this fence line three times, at least, with the stock coil. And I have taken all the iron out because it's, it's an Iron Age site, so I've taken the iron out as much as has come up. I have um, I've taken everything out that's not iron. I have done it. I have done it and done it and done it. Was back there again a couple of days ago because uh, we were going to go back to the field where I found the Real, but the car wouldn't start, so we had to order a new battery. But that's that's another story. Um, anyway, 
we can walk to this field, uh, the Cranach field. So we walked to it, Gavin and I, and I said, oh, well, I've got the SP24, I'll walk along this bit and I'll see. And I got along um, and I got a signal and I could hear an iron grunt. I absolutely could hear an iron grunt, but just like the other field, I could hear a second signal. Now this is on field, full sensitivity. So, you know, if there's any questions about, you know, how 2.77 or how the SP24 is doing with separation, no issue whatsoever. And I'll try and get some footage when I next go back to the Real field because the difference between iron and slag when you're when you're swinging, you could hear it going beep 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 beep, you know, as it's picking up each signal. The separation is great, and that's in field full sensitivity. So, um, anyway, I could hear this signal, and I could hear iron, and I thought, mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is you know some kind of big piece of iron that I've missed before, um, or what it is. So, I went all the way around it, listening, listening, listening. And again, I was getting a tone in the 60s that was within a couple of numbers. It was about 68, 68, 69. I thought, hmm, there's something there. I think there's something there. And I can, I can sort of come away from it and I can hear the iron and I can pinpoint on the iron and then I can come back with a small coil and I can get right on top of it and I can hear it. Okay, I'm gonna dig this. And uh, I dug it and what pops up but a solid silver button again silver it was next to something that grunts like iron and i'm sorry again i'm not very good at this um okay but it looks like a little targe actually like the the highlanders kind of shield uh, i'll put a video in uh, sorry a photo in so you can see that better but i didn't actually find the iron i dug that up cleared the hole put the simplex back over it could still hear the iron grunt but that secondary little sweet sound was gone again it's a pasture field it's tussocky and tufty there's bits of grass where the sheep haven't eaten um, and because of the narrowness of that small coil i could get in and i could isolate that from the bit of iron that was near to it the reason i'm saying the nip shield technique uh, you know i've asked terry about this we're going to have a video call and discuss it um, if something is next to iron and you're using this technique um, it possibly won't see your find. It might if you actually can pinpoint it really well and you can get away from it. Um, and that I'll put I'll put another video up because I've got an example of uh, something that happened to Gavin and I. But this is already long enough, so I apologise for that, John. Um, I'm a bit less sparky than usual. I haven't the hay fever's kicked in. Anyway, uh, where was I? Yes, back to the nip shield technique. Unless you're very careful, you might pick up the iron and you might walk away from something that you don't want to walk away from. Um, so just be careful with that one. Um, if you can hear a solid tone and you can get it down to within a couple of numbers, that solid a couple of numbers, um, the tighter you can get that numbers, the more likely it's something round because that's what metal detectors are set up to find round things and if you get a solid single number or one or two numbers that it doesn't jump between and it's not aluminium or iron or you know big big stuff it's likely going to be something round and this one and the real both were the same they were in those in the 60s and they were within two numbers on the vdi yet both of them were you know that far you know, a good five, six inches down. Um, so if you can get a signal that locks itself down to one or two numbers on the VDI and you can get it bi-directionally, more than one direction, go around it, see if it's repeatable. If it's repeatable, it's probably worth digging, even if the nip shield says it's iron. Now, do your own experiments. And if you find that every time you get this and the nip shield saying it's iron, you dig it up and you can't find anything else in there but iron, please let me know um, because we'll work with Terry and we'll figure out what we can do to, to help isolate that better. Um, but in my experience on both of these finds, I would not have found them without the SP24. Um, so that is what I have for you that the differences are. The differences are you have to swing more because it's smaller. Uh, you don't have any weight difference, but the balance is better with the SP24. The balance is much better and your arm will be less tired, which is a good thing because you will be swinging more because it's not as big. 
you will find things that you cannot find with the larger coil because you will be able to isolate the signals better. You will be able to get in amongst stubble better. Um, I think somebody asked if you're on a stubble field, um, do you push the grass down? Do you bash the stubble? What do you do? Or do you just sort of hover six inches above it? Not to me specifically, but as a question. I said, I've got the SP24 on. It is a hardy little thing. And I will, you know, obviously not solid stubble, but I will push over it because I'm not worried about it. And it doesn't false. Full sensitivity field hitting stubble. The SP24 does not false for me. Make sure you ground balance, but it does not false. Um, so... Um, 2.77, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, you will get the best performance from the machine on the SP24 with 2.77. If you put it on 2.78, you will lose signals that 2.77, I am sure, was written for with this coil. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything I can say. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't be without it. It's my stock coil. I would recommend it to everybody. It will change your experience with this machine. It really, really will. Um, it, it's a delight. Perhaps on a beach, if you're going to dig everything, then you use a bigger coil because you can cover more ground. Um, I don't know. I don't know because you still might have two things next to each other. You might be less likely on a beach because it's not like an agricultural field, but I don't know. Um, I just find it maneuverable, better balanced. I can isolate things better. Um, just, just a delight. So I hope that answers your question, John. I'm sorry that I've gone on so long with it, but, uh, you know, please keep the questions coming. Um, I'll put a link to that Simplex Plus group in the description for this. So if you're interested in coming over and joining, it's a group for all experienced detectorists. But if you're new to the simplex, that they have a policy that no question is stupid and no one will mock you or give you any grief for asking something that is a basic question. So it is very, very welcoming. And that's one of the things I really like about it. So thank you very much to Clive and Dustin and Nick for inviting me along to the group and asking me to do the challenge. And thanks very much to John Heaton for the question. And uh, I'll be working on the next two questions. The first one, as soon as I can figure out how to replicate it to show you. Uh, and the second one, once I look up and see what it was again. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.